Welcome to the Baynet's Countdown to November, a series of interviews with the candidates in the November 4th general election. I'm Dick Myers, and my guest today for this segment is Steve Waugh, who's a Republican candidate for State Senate from District 29, which includes all of St. Mary's County and Lower Calvert County. How far up do you go in, in Calvert County? Uh, District 29 goes up to about the Calvert Cliffs Nuclear Power Station and White Sands. Uh -huh. Is it a little bit more this time than it was in the last election? No, in, in redistricting, they trimmed off three precincts uh, from Calvert, uh, from the Calvert side of District 29. So in the St. Leonard area, got uh, pulled up into 27. State's opponent in uh, general election is incumbent Roy Dyson. You ran against Roy four years ago. It was a fairly close race, wasn't it? Very close. Actually, uh, it was 2.9%, uh, so it was only 1,278 votes. So it was 640 flips uh, from winning, so I wish I had door knocked one more day. Mm -hmm. So what do you think might be different this time that would allow you to, to win? Well, uh, the starting point is completely different. I'm starting out having uh, a lot better name recognition. I got 21,000 votes last time, so uh, there's 21,000 people who were ready for change uh, four years ago. I only need 1,000 more uh, this time. So um, I think the, the starting point is a much better place. Plus, People obviously uh, take you a lot more seriously uh, on a second run, and they understand that you're actually capable and know what you're doing. They've had more time to look at you and think about it and, uh, and reflect on uh, the election. So this, that was the starting point. And then the difference is, is as a candidate, is I have a much better understanding of what needs to be done and when it needs to be done. The first time we were running, and I, I have to say, anyone who has the opportunity to uh, run for office, Go help uh, find a candidate, go help somebody, or run for office. It is a phenomenal experience. It really is. It's wonderful. You learn so much about the community. You get to meet thousands or tens of thousands of people. You do a lot of things that you might not otherwise. So it's, it's really a tremendous experience, although you have to be an extraordinary extrovert. <laughs> uh, but it can be a lot of fun. But for me, uh, the first time, everything I did uh, was the first time. And so people would say, gee, Steve, do you have a palm card? I'm like, what's a palm card? Mm -hmm. um, so it was, it was a pretty steep learning curve. Uh, this time, I already knew exactly what I needed, when I needed it, how much of it I wanted, and where to get it from, how much it was going to cost. So a lot of the logistical aspects of the campaign were a lot easier. So it allowed me to focus on uh, going out and actually contacting voters and speaking with people. And I think that's made a huge difference. I've heard you say, uh, elect me to go to Annapolis with Larry Hogan. You must feel that Mr. Hogan is, is, is going to win. I guess the question is, is this a Republican year, do you believe? Uh, I think this is going to be a Republican year, uh, I think nationally and as well as at the state level. And it's for a lot of different reasons. But fundamentally, it's being driven by a loss of trust and that people simply do not trust uh, the Democrats in Annapolis to keep running the state. They think they're, they're taking the state in the wrong direction. Uh, and there's ample evidence of it with things like a rain tax and extreme gun control that's just driving people out of the state. Um, you know, we're, we're talking about building a new pistol range or a, a new world-class, uh, you know, rifle range, but it, it fundamentally will be illegal to bring the rifles into the state to go to the range, so it's sort of an oxymoron. Uh, if you build it, they can't come. And uh, I, I think that's, that's what Maryland has done to itself or, or what the folks in Annapolis have done to us. And, I mean, you even have John, John Bohannon now admitting openly, we failed. We did things because it made us feel good. We didn't think through the impacts and it's killing off businesses and it's killing jobs. And, uh, and we agree. And I think uh, half of the state is now thinking about leaving the state because of this. So yeah, it's probably going to be a big Republican here. Before we get deeper into the issues, tell us a little bit about yourself, your background, your experience. Oh, well, uh, I'm actually a native Marylander. I was born in Annapolis. Uh, my mom's an Annapolis girl. And uh, my dad was uh, Naval Academy class of 63. I'm class of 86 and my son is class of 13, so it's family business. Uh, he's actually down in flight school, and he just got jets the other week, so we're very excited for him. Um, anyway, so graduated from the Naval Academy. I actually have a degree in uh, aero -astro engineering, so I'm, I am technically a rocket scientist. I am literally. It's kind of funny. Um, and then I went into the Marine Corps, and I flew jets with the Marines. I uh, flew the A-V-8B Harrier. Uh, it's the, the vertical takeoff and landing airplane. Um, did that for 20 years, among other things. I was a Ford Air Controller uh, with the uh, Light Armor Infantry and, and had a lot of fun, uh, served my country proudly. And that included a few tours here at Nav Air, uh, working uh, UAV programs and then helicopter programs and a bunch of other stuff. So 
And since then I've retired and now I work for Johns Hopkins Applied Physics Lab and I do kind of high-end engineering for the Navy. So your experience with the Navy, how do you feel that that could translate into um, uh, being useful, Senator? Well, uh, where I think it's going to make a difference is, is that, number one, as a veteran, uh, I understand the veterans' issues, I think, uh, better than average. Uh, number two, as a guy who's uh, been in, uh, inside the fence at NAV Air and working as a deputy program executive officer, deputy program manager on a lot of different things and, you know, billion-dollar programs, I have a better understanding of how the Navy works and how the NAV Air SISCOM works. So what goes on and what is the, you know, the mother's milk for the base, which is the, the major driver of the economy down here. So I think bringing that insight, having worked inside the fence for 15 years, bringing that up to Annapolis and helping them understand what the impact is of some crazy ideas like the tech tax or a management tax that would wipe out all of our uh, contract services here in, uh, not only in Lexington Park, but up in Aberdeen as well and in Fort Meade. Uh, I, I think that will help a great deal. Are you concerned about the uh, wind turbine that's proposed? Uh, it would be a really, really bad thing. Now, we've, we've heard that the Navy just, uh, uh, and, and I believe that uh, Congress has approved a, a study and a delay in implementing the wind turbine, uh, the Great Wind Project, Great Bay Wind Project, while the Navy completes its study, and that will be good, assuming that that holds. Uh, hopefully that will give us some time to, to think about it. But uh, as a guy who's worked with uh, some of the sneakier airplanes on base, if you have a 600-foot metal pole that spins inside of a radar test range, that's bad. And uh, it will definitely hurt uh, Pax River's ability to carry out its primary mission, a developmental test, and that will make it extremely vulnerable in the next round of BRACs. So those 20,000 Navy jobs can leave just as fast as they came. So it's very, very important that we make sure that that is not only dead, but completely and totally dead. Let's talk about the state's business friendliness. That's an issue in this campaign. Um, the counter to it is that uh, the state may not be as business friendly as other states, but it has other things going for it, like uh, its education system, as an example, th that those are counterbalances. Uh, what do you think about that, and, and where should the state be going? With well, regards to uh, I'll tell you, uh, to pay the state a great compliment, we came back here specifically because of the education opportunities for our two boys. I have two kids, and uh, when we came back the second time, uh, Nick was uh, going into junior high and uh, Philip was in elementary school. And we came back here specifically because I mean, we, we lived in Yuma, Arizona. And it was the worst county in the worst state of the country. So we have seen the bottom of the barrel. And my wife, Myra, actually taught at San Luis Elementary School. She could see the border crossing from her, <laughs> from her school room. She'd look out the window and see it. So we, we know how bad it can be. And this place is fantastic. And it's, it was great for our kids. They got a great education, starting in Little Flower School and finishing Patuxent High. And Philip is now at uh, University of Maryland College Park. Nick went on to the Naval Academy. So education here is terrific, and we want to make sure that we, we keep that going forward. Um, and like I said, that was, that was the primary reason we came here. But the business climate part of the problem is, and, and I was just speaking with uh, a, a gentleman who owns a family business the other day, and he told me, you know, the problem is, is the, it's the, the death of a thousand cuts. It's a little regulation here, it's a little extra tax here, it's a little extra here, it's a little extra here. And it's just making it harder and harder and harder. And there are new businesses that want to start, but then say, I, I, I could locate here or I could locate in Delaware, why would I locate here? Uh, why am I going to pay these extra taxes? Uh, small businesses and, and small business owners have told me, Steve, we don't have a voice in Annapolis. There's no one that we can turn to who really listens to us and understands our, our problems. And, and the clearest example that they gave me, and I've, I've heard this many times, I, I heard the exact same story four years ago, is in the case of an unemployment decision, if you have an employee that you have to let go uh, for cause, is they're almost always found uh, in favor of the employee and the you know, if you have somebody steal from you and you fire the guy, you're still going to end up paying his unemployment. And that's just wrong. And it's just, it's unnecessarily punishing businesses and making it hard for businesses to locate. And that's why 6,000 of them left. Your opponent, though, is 
concert, considered to be a conservative Democrat. He actually gets pretty good ratings with uh, some of the business organizations in the state. So how would how would you consider yourself differentiate yourself from him? Well, being considered and and being actual are very different things. And uh, I, I would put it to you this way: is that jobs are the issue, taxes are the problem, and spending is the cause. If you believe that to be true, if you believe that there is a causal relationship between runaway spending and Annapolis that is driving unbelievable tax hikes, including a rain tax, which is absolutely the laughing stock of the country, and that is what is killing jobs. If you believe that to be the case, then spending is the underlying cause, and that's the part that has to be killed. And Senator Dyson has voted for all of it. When he started in 1996, the state budget was $13 billion. It is now triple that at $39 billion. That's a pretty sizable increase, and he's voted for all of it all along the way. And last session, he had an opportunity to vote to cut the budget by 1%, $240 million out of the $39 billion budget. So it's, no kidding, a rounding error, and he refused. So if you're not willing to cut the spending, or even stop the growth in the spending, or even just slow the growth in the spending, then you're, you're at Walmart swiping the credit card just as fast as everybody else, and you can't act surprised when the bill comes due. So that's what we're, we're trying to bring, and that's uh, you know, what Larry Hogan says, is that we've got to cut the uh, spending so that we can cut taxes, so that we can grow jobs. So I think uh, if you're going to vote for Larry Hogan, you need to send him a couple of wingmen that are going to work with him in the Senate and in the House and move that agenda forward. How about some of the social issues like the legalization of marijuana and the transgender bill and um, gun control? Is it possible to go in there and to reverse that course that Maryland has gone on? I think you can if uh, you work hard at it. And it's going to be a matter of working hard every day, building personal relationships with all the other legislators across the aisle, in the Senate and in the House, and then understanding and creating a coalition of the willing on each individual issue. And uh, it's not about demagoguing or demonizing, it's about bringing the other legislators around by saying, look, this is what people in your district are saying, this is what your people in your district want, and then helping them understand and find a way to, uh, to move those issues forward. And, and the, the first one among those is uh, certainly SB 281, all right? And that's the, uh, the extreme gun control bill. And uh, we know that that, you know, that was enacted with much fanfare, and it hasn't stopped uh, any of the killings. It didn't stop a mass stabbing. And just recently, you know, we had a Muslim jihadi behead a woman in Oklahoma. And he wasn't stopped with a pop gun. He was stopped with a personal carry firearm. So. Right now we have a, a government in Annapolis that thinks we are more of a danger than a Muslim jihadist. This is unacceptable. We need to go up there and not only just vote no, and that's, that's the thing. The difference between uh, a, a guy who appears conservative who stands up and periodically votes no at, at the right moment and a guy who goes up and does the work, I've actually written a repeal of SB 281, already written it, and I already have seven co-sponsors, and I'm not even elected. That's leadership. That's saying, I'm going to take the flag and I'm going to move it. So that is absolutely an issue. I believe that there's a lot of bipartisan support for it. I can name five Democratic senators that I will bet big money that if challenged, they'll co-sponsor it. And if you go forward with a co-sponsored bill in the Senate, it's hard to imagine. It's hard to imagine how that doesn't at least get some air time. And I would rather be on the offense than on the defense. If I'm, if I'm pushing them, they're reacting to me and then we're in a better position. I don't want to go up and just play defense and vote no as things come towards me. You mentioned earlier about uh, uh, citizen involvement in this uh, campaign. How can people get involved in, in your campaign? Um, do you have a Facebook page? Do you have a website? Uh, do you need volunteers? Uh, you know, tell our audience about that. I, I am probably the most connected candidate in American history. <laughs> Yeah, we have a we have a good Facebook page, uh, and you can find me just you know Steve Waugh. Uh, you can also find a campaign page that's uh, Waugh 2014. The, uh, the the easiest place to find me is on my website, and that's waugh2014.com. 
Uh, and if you go there, then you can find links to my YouTube, to uh, LinkedIn, Twitter feed, Facebook, the whole enchilada, as well as blog. And then there's an opportunity uh, a page in there for how to help. So if you want to volunteer on the campaign, you can go on there. And it'll list several options uh, for ways that people can plug in. Right now, at this late date, with about 30 days left in, where we really need help, uh, more than anything else, uh, two places. One, there's still some door knocking to be done. We're going to be out banging on doors. But then the, the most important one is going to be uh, on game day, on the election day, and actually during early voting. So we need help manning the polls. We need someone who's going to be standing there, uh, you know, wearing a t-shirt, handing out cards, and then uh, trying to move a few votes. Because there's going to be a few people that walk up there that, that really haven't made up their mind yet, and it's an opportunity to, uh, to play a part in it all. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. And thank you for joining us today on Countdown to November.